Dear colleagues and friends, good morning. My name is Chen Nan. I'm from the International Office of Nanjing University. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Kyoto University for your arrangements. And because of your support and help, I can have this opportunity to stand here and share with you the ongoing undergraduate education reform at our university. Um, before I move on to my topic, I'd like to say that when I uh, set my foot at this city, I felt quite familiar because my city, Nanjing, and also the city where our university is located, shares a lot in common with this city, Kyoto. Uh, we both are um, very old cities, and Nanjing is also famous for the title, the capital of six dynasties. So we also have a lot of uh, temples and city walls. So I have to say that I feel not chilly, but very familiar and warm when I'm here. Okay. Um, today my topic is innovating undergraduate education, the introduction to a double three model at Nanjing University. Uh, I will mainly focus on two parts. The first part is to introduce this model. This is a double three model. Later I'll introduce what, why it's called a double three. And the second part is the role that our international office has played in promoting this reform. Um, just in last year, we celebrated our 110th anniversary. So our university is also a very old one. Um, we, our history can date it back to uh, can date back to 1902. At that time, uh, our university was called Sanjiang Normal School. And um, since we are a very old university, we want to try something new at this new age. So we would like to talk, call our university an old university with responsibility. They would ask, "Be responsible for whom?" The answer is definitely for our students. We have to be responsible for those top students, those students who have gone through the very uh, cruel, I'd say, the cruel and intense competition out of the national entrance examination. Uh, you can see the data here. Uh, sorry. In, 19, uh, in 2012, in Jiangsu province, uh, in total we have 474,000. 229 examinees in this college entrance examination, but only the top 3,000 candidates will have this opportunity to get enrolled in Nanjing University. So you can count the percentage. Okay, it's a very small percentage. So for those very excellent and very hardworking students, we need to offer them the best education. That's why our president, Dr. Chen Jun, said in 2009 that all Nanjing University staff and faculty should work together to build the best undergraduate edu education in China. And this is also the time when we began our reform in undergraduate education. You may say we have a very big ambition, ambition uh, to build the best undergraduate education in China. Um, that's right, it's big, but we are working to it. We are, looking, we are moving forward to it gradually every day. And in, um, in the 2005 Nanjing University Undergraduate Education Conference, we set four guidelines for this reform. The first one is top universities should offer the first-class undergraduate education. The second one is top students deserve the first-class undergraduate education. The third one, top faculty should focus on teaching. And actually, we have done a lot of work to encourage our senior professors to focus on teaching. And the fourth one is gradu uh, our graduates can have a bright future, either getting a job or pursuing further study. So next, I'll talk about the double three model. You may ask, what is double three, right? Um, double three means three stages of study. That means that in the four years of undergraduate study at Nanjing University, we divide it into three stages, okay? And also, another three is the three developmental paths. That means after they finish their stage one and stage two, they can have three choices, the three paths of development. Okay. And now I will start by the stage one, that is the general education. That means that when the students get enrolled in Nanjing University, they will not 
quickly start their major studies. Instead, they will first begin their general education. And I, I know that it is uh, well uh, acknowledged by all the colleagues and friends here that the general education is very important for our students. But I still want to quote uh, the words from Harvard University report of the Task Force on General Education to share with you how important it is. Um, this kind of learning is not only one of the enrichments of existence, it's one of the achievements of civilization. It makes them more reflective about their beliefs and choices, more creative in their problem solving, more perceptive of the world around them. College is an opportunity to learn and reflect and reflect in the environment free from most of the constraints on time and energy that operate in the rest of life. As for the general education at our university, we roughly divide it into two parts, and I all mainly focus on the general courses. Okay. Uh, for the students in their freshman year, they have to take those general courses, and they have to earn at least 14 credits. It's required. If you don't get the 14 credits, you cannot graduate from Nanjing University. And uh, in order to offer the students the very uh, first class general courses, we are doing a curriculum reform too. Uh, we are aiming to offer the 30 courses falling into seven categories. I may give you some examples of the categories. The first category is called Chinese history and culture. The second category is the world history and culture. The third one is the exploring and progress in the tech science and technology of uh, human history. And these uh, topics are very broad, but these curriculums, these courses are designed to offer our students the opportunity to discover the world around them, to better prepare them for the professional study. Okay. And here I want to share with you a very, um, I should say, a very uh, innovative move of our university, that is the freshman seminar. Every first year student at Nanjing University have this opportunity to take the freshman seminar. These seminars are offered by the eminent scholars and senior professors at Nanjing University. Currently, we have 100 courses. Okay? These courses are not about a very specific topic. They are about very general topics. And the good thing about this seminar is that at the very first, at the very first stage, at the very beginning of their study at the universities, those students can have the opportunities to have face-to-face -face discussion, face-to-face -face talk with those masters, I should say, masters in the academic field. I think this face-to-face -face discussion can help them to build their interest in the field they choose. And this uh, is a um, picture from, uh, this is what I take from our curriculum here. And sorry, it's in Chinese, but I can translate. The first one is called The Destiny of Our Universe. It's a very broad topic, right? The Destiny of Our U Universe. And the second one is called The Digital World. How, how could we put the world into computer? You can see these are very broad topics, right? Okay. And the second part is called the general required courses. Okay. As, uh, after the first stage, the students, I believe, they will be better, they will be uh, well prepared for their professional education. Okay. So they enter into stage two. In stage two, they will enter into the specific major, but they can have choices. After the first stage, they will know where their real interest relies on. They will know where their real interest is. So they can choose which major they will take. And when they first get enrolled at Nanjing University, they are not enrolled into a specific major. They are enrolled into a, a school or a department. So after the first stage, they can choose their specific major. Okay? And even for, in some cases, if the student find that, wow, I made a wrong decision, I was not suitable for this major, for this department, I choose at first, then our school also allows the student to change into other majors. This is also possible here. Okay? And also we are working to give them a, um, a seamless switch here. 
Okay, although it's hard, we are working on it. Okay, for example, if a student uh, first chose to uh, study physics, and then after the first stage, he found that he was not interested in it, so he could change into mathematics. Okay. And in this uh, professional education, we, uh, we offer a mentoring uh, system. That is, the senior, the senior professors in the schools or department offer the help to those students. And the third stage is the personalized education. That is the time when a student can have choices to either uh, enter into the academic path. That is to say, in the final stage, they can still choose these courses related with their um, major studies. And this will pre prepare them for the graduate study, the postgraduate study. And the second is cross-disciplinary or comprehensive path. That means the student can use the, the final stage to choose courses in other majors. They can have a minor or have a second major. This will make them more competitive. Okay. The third one is the employment or enterprise path. This one, uh, for the students who want to get a job after graduation, or for students who want to start their own business after graduation, they can take courses uh, offered by successful entrepreneurs or senior managers invited by our university. Uh, for example, these are the curriculum here. Uh, the students, they can take, for example, the first course is called Leadership and Teamwork. They can take such courses, and these courses can give them the experience necessary uh, for the future job market. And even more important is that we offer these um, entrepreneurs, they give their students the courage and uh, the confidence to start their own business. We encourage our students to do so. And um, I think by doing this reform, we want to give our students multiple choices and also the improvement of their competitiveness. Next, I'll talk about the, the role our international office has played in this three, uh, the double three reform. Because this reform is going to cultivate the talents with a global vision and also a free mind. So our office has played a very significant role in this reform. Um, our work basically falls into three categories. The first is increased student mobility. The second is increased faculty exchange. The third one is increased recruitment of international faculty. As for the student mobility, um, I'll just give you a brief example. In 2012, the number of Nanjing University students participating in exchange programs reaches 1,065. This is a very huge number. And I, I'm very proud of this number because our, university is, uh, our office is really uh, working hard to give our students more opportunities to take part in uh, those exchange programs. Um, for this is the number of schools receiving Nanjing University students, receiving those long-term students. That's, that is to say the students can have the exchange program uh, more than three months. Um, we can divide it into regions. In Asia, we have 33. And fortunately, we have 18 Japanese universities, also including Kyoto University. Thank you for receiving our students. And also in America, we have 24. In Europe, 42. In total, we have 105 universities, five top universities in the world that receive our students. And second is the increased faculty exchange. We, uh, we think that the backbone of our, uh, the success of our reform is to improve the teaching quality. And we want to expand the opportunities of research collaboration and further study for our staff. So we have uh, working hard to uh, strengthen our links with the top universities and institutions in the world. These are the examples of the programs our professors and our faculties and, uh, and our staffs can take. Um, this one, Swedish International Development Agency programs. Uh, in last year's uh, selection uh, in China, only four candidates were uh, awarded the chance, and one of them is from Nanjing University. And this young faculty and staff exchange program is fully supported, fully financially supported by our university. That's to say, every year we will 
select 20 uh, young faculty members or administrators to take part in the exchange programs. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I still have, uh, can, I, can I have three more or two more minutes? Sorry. Um, and the last one is to increase the recruitment of international faculty. Okay, uh, we have set special fund to recruit more international faculty. And the number of international faculty ex experts came to our university in 2012, which is 993. Okay, and the, the number of long-term international faculty uh, in our university in 2012 is 119. Okay, this is the last one. Um, I have to say that without, I, I know that without the support and the encouragement from all our partner universities and from our colleagues and friends sitting here today, our goal, our big ambition cannot be reached. So I have to say thank you. Thank you.